Now, just a reminder of the notation. Any complex number z is denoted by x plus i y. f of z is written like this, uh, u plus i v, where both u and v are functions of x and y. If f of z is analytic in a region, then it is differentiable at all points in the region, and the Cauchy-Riemann equations hold for all points in the region. Suppose that u of x, y is constant for some values x and y, and that v of x, y is also constant for some other set of values x and y. For example, u of x, y could be constant for all points on this curve here. And v of x, y could be constant for all points on this curve here. Of course, the constants here don't have to be the same. We will show that these two curves are perpendicular to each other. So we will show that the tangent to each curve at the point of intersection of the curves are perpendicular to each other. If we take the differential of this equation here, u of x, y equals constant, we get du equals zero. That means that if we're, we are at some point here on this curve, um, we know that the value of u will be some constant. But if we change x and y by a very small amount, we get this second point here. Well, we could change x by a tiny amount, delta x, and then y will change by a corresponding amount, delta y. Well. The amount by which we've changed u is going to be zero because the value of the function at this point is the same as the value of the function u at this point. It's just this constant here, whatever it is. So um, when we change x and y, when we go to a new point, uh, the change in u will be zero because u is the same for all points on this curve. Now we saw before that we can write du like this. As I explained before, one way to see that is to pretend that both x and y are functions of uh, some variable t. So if we want to get du dt, what we have to do is partially differentiate u with respect to x. So that picks out um, terms involving x of t in, in this function u of x and y. And uh, when we do that, then we have to multiply by dx dt. So we don't have a partial derivative here because x is just a function of the single variable t. Uh, but of course we have these expressions involving y of t floating about, so we have to um, take care of those. We have to differentiate y partially with respect, uh, sorry, differentiate u partially with respect to y, because u is a function of y, and then multiply that by the derivative of y with respect to t. And if we multiply across by dt, we get this here. So this equals zero. Now we can rearrange that to get dy dx. So we just bring this term over, becomes minus du dx times dx, and uh, then we divide across by um, du dy. And we also divide both sides by dx. So if we're dealing with this point here, then dy dx would be the slope of this tangent to the graph of u of the points that make um, u constant. So remember, we're going from this point to a nearby point. I showed it down here, but I'm going to show it now at the point of intersection of the two curves. So um, for these two points, uh, du is zero. So these two points are uh, very close to each other. Um, but dy dx will give us the slope of the tangent, in the limit, of course, as delta x goes to zero. du is zero, but dy dx is the slope of this line. We can apply the same argument to the second function, v of x, y. We take this point and, and a nearby point, and uh, the change in v, dv, will be zero. Because for all points on this curve, um, v will be constant. But we get dy dx by considering the differential. This time we would have dv. We just replace u with v in this equation here. And we rearrange it in the same way as we did for the this one here. So we just replace the u with a v. So this would give us the slope of the tangent uh, to this second curve at this point. dy dx is the slope of uh, this line here. We're dealing with the second curve now.
Next we multiply these slopes together. So we have du dx times dv dx on top. And my two minuses give a plus. Now we can replace dv dx, which is this here, with minus du dy using this Cauchy Riemann equation. Underneath we have du dy times dv dy. But this dv dy can be replaced with du dx. So now we can see that uh, everything cancels out. And we're left with minus 1. So these two dy dx's refer to not the same um, tangent, but two different tangents. Okay, um, the first dy dx refers to the slope of this tangent, and the second dy dx refers to the slope of this tangent here. And when we multiply the slopes, we get minus 1. So that tells us that the tangents are perpendicular to each other. For example, if the slope of this line here was 2 fifths, then the slope of this line here would be minus 5 over 2. So that comes from basic coordinate geometry, um, the relation between the slopes of perpendicular lines. 2 fifths by minus 5 halves gives, would give us minus 1. So one line would have positive slope, the other line would have to have negative slope. So um, the slope of one line would be the negative reciprocal of the slope of the other line. Here is an example of a set of orthogonal curves. These two points are meant to be oppositely charged particles that are near to each other. The dotted lines are the electric lines of force. So let's say that they're, those curves are V. For example, suppose uh, that we take this line of force here, this dotted curve here. Well, if we take any point on this curve, say this point here, um, and uh, we calculate V, well, we just get some constant, we'll just, we, we'll just get some number, and that number will be the same if we pick this point here. By the way, that number V has got nothing to do with the electric field strength at this point. It's just the geometrical property of this, of this curve. Uh, the electric field at this point will actually be tangential to the curve, so the, the direction of the electric field will be along this tangent. So the electric field varies, of course. It um, points in different directions for points along this curve. Now the solid curves are called equipotential curves. If a charge is constrained to move along an equipotential curve, then the work done on it by the electric field will be zero. Because an equipotential curve is constructed in such a way that it is always perpendicular to the electric field lines, to all the dashed lines. These dashed lines are perpendicular to it everywhere. So for example, if a charged particle is here, um, then the force on it due to the electric field is tangential to the dashed line, as I said earlier. That means the force will be um, in a direction perpendicular to the equipotential curve at this point. Now the work done by this force on the charge that's constrained to move along this equipotential curve is zero because it has no component in a direction along this curve. The equipotential curves could be given by uh, the function u equals constant. So for this particular one here, then the value of u will be some um, constant for all points on this curve. And for this curve in here, the the value of u will be some other constant for all points on this curve.